let's read Cicero's Procalio chapter 10. Here I have highlighted some interesting features of word order in pink because in this and a few chapters later, Cicero does some interesting things with Catiline and Caelius's name. Uh, sometimes he tries to put them as far apart from each other in the sentence as possible, and sometimes he puts them right next to each other in the sentence. And I think it's helpful to sort of compare how he does this across several chapters because um, there's a bit of a variation in how he does it. We start with four. In regards to the fact that the familiaritas, the familiarity or intimacy of Catiline, objectaes, was thrown or mentioned against Caelius. Uh, so regarding the fact that the familiarity with Catiline was uh, mentioned against Caelius, longa vista sus uh, he ought to be far from that suspicion, uh, like abhorere be placed far away uh, from that suspicion. And I guess there's a there's a little bit of a word play there with um, he ought to be far removed from such a suspicion, and he will get removed uh, in terms of word order in the next sentence. But in this first sentence, it's kind of a um, bit matter of fact. So regarding the familiarity of Catiline uh, that has been mentioned against Caelius, it's slightly hard to translate because Caelius is in the middle of that verb, objecta est. But it's not a random word order. I think it's because he's being associated with that accusation against him. And that's why he's nested within that verb. It's mentioned against Caelius that it, there was this familiarity of Catiline, Catiline's familiarity. Uh, so I'd say that this first example of word order, you could say that Caelius and Catiline are sort of far away from each other, but it's not the best example of them being placed really far away. After he says he should be far removed from that suspicion, he says, Hoc genim adolescente, scitis consulatum me cum petisse Catilinum. So that is when four, when this man was an adolescent, when this man was a, a young man, you know that uh, Catiline sought the consulship along with me. And here is a sentence where the young man and Catiline are as far apart from each other as they can be. They're at the start and the very end of the sentence. Uh, and I think that's not a coincidence. Uh, Catalinum could have been uh, before petisse, that would have been totally natural, uh, but here Catalinum possibly being placed at the end for effect, and possibly it's being placed at the end so that he is as far away from Ka uh, from Caelius as possible. Ad quem si accessit aut si a me discessit umquam. So if he approached him, so ad quem is referring to Catalina, the last person mentioned, if he approached him or if he went away from me ever, if he ever approached him or went away from me, uh, this is refer, the subject here is Caelius. If he ever left me and approached him, quam quam multi boni adolescentes illi homini nequam aquim probo stuvuerunt. Although, and so he interrupts himself, although many good young men uh, stuvuerunt were passionate about or uh, followed, I guess you, you follow a person in a sense, uh, it literally means um, were eager for, but I guess uh, although many good young men followed that worthless man and that improbable, um, impudent, uh, improper, uh, rude, <laughs> that worthless and improper man. So here we have some contrasts that have been set up. Um, I should have said, what kind of thing did I 
highlight in si akesit, si diskesit. There's a kind of repetition of akesit and diskesit, repetition of the same verb but with slightly different forms because of the ad and dis. So there's kind of a, a repetition within the word choice, but also that their contrasts, akesit and diskesit, are opposites. It makes a beautiful phrase uh, that sort of completes his meaning if he ever approached him or left me. Uh, and then also there's the repetition of C, C, that would be anaphora because C is being used twice uh, at the start of each clause. And so if he approached or departed from me ever, um, although many good young men, so we've got the good young men uh, were nevertheless uh, passionate about that worthless and improper man. There's a contrast between them being good and the people they follow, the person they follow being terrible. Also, I'd say there's a, um, a maybe an age distinction between adolescents and homo, uh, where it's like maybe it's something in this man is particularly appealing to the youth who don't know any better, maybe. Although homo can kind of encompass quite a age range, it's not really a um, an age specific word homo, but adolescence is. Uh, so although many good young men followed that worthless and improper man, tum existimetor Caelius Catalinae nimium familiaris fuisse. Then let it be thought that Caelius, uh, let Caelius be thought to have been too friendly with Catiline. In this uh, sentence, we have the opposite tendency of putting Caelius and Catiline on the opposite sides of the sentence. They're right next to each other in word order. And I'd say that existimator, let it be thought then, uh, is an ironic statement like he really doesn't want Caelius to be thought of as too friendly with Catiline but he's saying this because I think it um it excites the contrary impulse and you're like I don't want to don't tell me what to think <laughs> but here is his sort of uh it's like reverse psychology oh yeah go ahead think that Caelius was too friendly with Catiline if if you're um you know if he ever did any of this stuff which I'm going to refute, then then sure, think think that way, but you're wrong. Uh, so existimator, I'd say, has an ironic force there uh, as a jussive subjunctive. And that's kind of um, the point of this sentence, like Caelius and Catiline being too close together is part of the point of this ironic statement. Yeah, they were really close, sure. <laughs> nah. And um, so that's why they're placed right next to each other, to emphasize that idea of them being overly friendly. Atenim. So Atenim is that um, but indeed, but uh, he uses it to introduce a statement that he's going to refute. So, but I am told, you could translate Atenim as that, postea schemus et vidimus esse hunc in Ilius etiam amicis. But indeed, later we knew and we saw that this man was in the friends of that guy, uh, and then etiam uh, also, or indeed, or even. He was even in that guy's friends. Uh, I should have put Hunk and Ilius in pink here, actually, because there we have them also quite close to each other, and they are referring to Caelius and Catiline being quite close. It's part of the refutation that he's going to, uh, I mean, it's a statement he's going to refute, so that's why it's important that they be too close there as well. Quis negat? Who denies it? It's a very short sentence, and I'd say in terms of the tone it's setting up is it's going to set up a very uh, large number of short sentences that just go straight into the narration, don't embellish, don't 
embroider on top of anything. It's kind of like he's just stating the facts and kind of being a little bit dismissive of uh, the significance of it. It's sort of like, this is what happened, uh, and I don't deny it. Uh, but said ego illud tempus aetatis, quod ipsum sua sponte in firmum, but I, and we haven't yet met the main verb, it's going to be defend, I am something, but it will be, I am defending that time of life, which itself is in firmus, uh, is weak, sua sponte, of its own accord, but I'm defending uh, that time of life which itself is weak of its own accord, aliorum autem libidine infestum est, uh, and which, however, is, uh, but which is infestum, is attacked uh, by the lust of others, and then the est is infestum est, which is um, it, it's had a go at by the lust of others. Id hoc loco defendo. That is what I'm defending in this place. I'm defending that, the that time of life where the young man is his most vulnerable. Fuit adsidus mecum praetore me. This is very, um, uh, very short sentences here and lots of ascendaton no conjunctions between these. Uh, he was devoted with me, uh, or like very close, uh, continuing closely with me, praetoremen, when I was a praetor, ablative absolute. No, no, verat Catilinum. So he did not know Catiline. And uh, that is also very short. Africam tum praetor ille obtine, but at that time he, i.e. Catiline, held Africa as a praetor. And just giving a little bit of extra information, going straight into the next sentence. Secutus est, secutus est tum annus. The next year followed. Very kind of scene, like it's just very unembellished. Calsam de pegunis repetundis Catalina dixit. Catiline told, uh, well, I guess, pled his case regarding uh, extortion. And me cum erat hic. He was with me. This man was with me. Ooh, I should have uh, highlighted hic and illy. I didn't go into the hic illy uh, things. I think that there is a juxtaposition here that would be interesting word order. Uh, he was with me, and he is referring to this man, Caelius. He did not ever come uh, to that man, to Catiline. Ne quidem means not even, and then advocatus, as an advocate. So that means he did not uh, come to Caelius as a supporter in court while Catal sorry, he didn't come to Catiline as a supporter in court while Catiline was pleading his case and being sued, which is what you would expect if he was friends with this guy. So he Ili, I think they are placed next to each other for contrast. Dein keeps fuit annus. The next year went Co ego consulatum petiwi in which uh, the year when I sought the consulship, Petebat Catilina Mecum, Catiline was seeking it with me. Very matter of fact. So that tone is very, uh, very straight into the facts kind of tone. Num quad illum acessit, ame num quam recessit. We've got a similar thing happening with acessit, recessit as happened earlier with akesit discesit, a repetition of the uh, underlying verb, the base verb. And there was a repetition of nunquam, nunquam, 
which is uh, arguably an aphorism, even though nunquam is not the first exact word in this clause. Hmm. That makes it a little bit more difficult to justify as an aphorism, but the idea is that they are supposed to be introducing the clause. What I've done with highlighting ad illum and ame is that they've been put in between where the numquams are. So this could be an example of chiasmus, where the word pairs, um, the reversed word order is uh, numquam and then ad illum, and then ame numquam. So the prepositional phrases are nested within the numquams.